All right, guys. So we're here, continuing box to work. What I'm going to do today is replace the actual engine mount. See in there? And here's a new one. But I get Euro part out of eBay. I think it should be fine. Uh, so, what I'm going to try with the strategy that I'm going to follow is disconnect these two bolts first to remove this carrier. You can see how easy it moves, it's shot. So, it needs to be replaced. Obviously, these clips fell apart, the ones for the water lines. I have to figure out if I want to get new ones or if I tie them up to see if they leak. So, uh, I'm doing minor stuff until I can get the car running and then improve from there. This one should be easy to pick up later after I run. Now uh, the cool line and get the engine running first. I've never heard this engine run. And this is for my 06 boxer which is actually up in, in my lift right now uh, waiting for this to be complete so I can move it in. So I have to do the mount, I have to do the starter, I have to complete piping on the top vacuum lines and that would be it ready to go back in and you'll connect a few things around here and ready to go back in so today water mount replacement my strategy is to remove these two bolts first so I can drop this carrier and then undo the bolts to hold the actual bracket to the engine once I do that I can take this out and either press it out with this unit or core out the rubber piece from the inside and use this to slip the new one in place. I may need a big vise which I may not may not have. So either I use a vise or I use a press or I use uh, old fashioned banging into place with something around this diameter to push it in. So one thing at a time, take the bracket out, both brackets separately recommend you do this right now before taking that out because you have the, the force that allows you to break the torque. So break the torque in all of them, you have the weight and then undo this, drop it and then undo this, drop it. So uh, I'll be back in a little bit. It's a change in approach. Decided to leave the carrier here. I'm going to use my Sawzall or reciprocating saw to actually get in there and cut the inner cut the bushing out cut the rubber part out and then cut the metal sleeve to actually force that out and hopefully uh, be able to either press the next one in there or uh, beat it into place or do something like that we'll figure that out when we get there now the problem I have right now on hand is removal of this so one thing at a time, I'm going to remove it and uh, basically I'm going to uh, have my Sawzall or whatever the name is, Sawzall I think is just a brand, so uh, the struggle with having right lightning, lighting at all times, but you guys know how it is, uh, reliable source of light at the right place is always a pain. There you go. Basically you get in here, you cut it all the way around if you want to. And if you hard to do when you actually have only two hands. You get the idea. Chew the rubber out go all the way around, beat it out of place. I'll be back when it's almost done. So cut all the way around it. Get kind of stinky. Uh, I'm gonna push it out of the way. I think it's pretty close. There it goes. <clears throat> so, centerpiece. Definitely was all chewed up. Okay, I didn't have to cut a whole lot. I have to take it out because it was already ripped. So I'm going to just make a cut straight down in the sleeve and uh, the best place to actually take it out is right here. So I'm going to beat it out of there uh, one way or another. 
all this in support versus taking it out and screwing with it uh, somewhere on the tabletop. So I'm going to cut the sleeve out and then try to force it out. I'll be back. How I cut it? Again, I'm going to do this number. itself. If it's easy, I'll cut more than one to make my life even easier. Uh, so if I cut this, cut through the sleeve and it's easy, again, I'll cut one on top or one, or, I don't know, 120 degrees or so out to be able to just uh, take it out in pieces. So uh, I'm going to keep working on it. I'll be back. Cuts are smiling my way because as I cut into it, it actually grabbed the actual sleeve and pulled it out. So if you look at it, sleeve started to come out which means it's probably not as tight as I thought it would be so uh, I should be able to push it from the other end uh, with a some kind of a driver uh, smooth driver or just a chisel or something I should be able to beat it out so you can see that but there's a travel it already moved cut into the sleeve itself. Dummy. Dummy. I wasn't even looking. Uh, but the bottom line is uh, it's out. So it's coming out. I should be able to slip the other one in uh, uh, without much problems hopefully. We'll see. So uh, we'll see how it comes out. Crazy. Easy money. I'm actually pushing on this. I'm doing it by hand. I'm not even using a hammer. So, stuff comes out just like that. But I would love to see the ones, the next, the new ones slip in. Something tells us it's not gonna be that easy. That's how you remove it. And like I said, I did chew up a little bit of the the base, but this aluminum is pretty heavy, so I'm not worried about cutting into it a tiny little bit. Uh, so uh, that's uh, that's the next step. And. Uh, Remember marking the carrier, fortunately, I marked it from the other side. <laughs> so the way it's going to go, pretty much one like that, one like this. So the lines is pretty much vertical, straight up and down, just like we see it. If you look, there's a, there is no bevel edge right here, so it's hard to see. I cut a little bit into it, but again, I'm not worried. This is pretty straight, however. This has, this has a nice bevel that tells me going from this side and try to tap it in and see how far it goes. I'm going to clean and grease it a little bit, put a little bit of a lubricant to hopefully be able to drive it in. If I'm driving it in like this, I'm done. Again, this is all, I call it R&D, so kind of research and development at the same time. If it goes in, beautiful if it doesn't I'll work it back out and figure a way uh, worst case I may take this whole carrier out to somebody and have them press this in I have a little press right here but it's not big enough I also rigged up a little stand where I can figure I can probably move it and try to smack it into place by standing the aluminum bracket right in there but let me try what's simple first again I'm gonna clean and lubricate this and if I start tapping it with a hammer around the edge and it goes in, I'm done. Thank you. Okay guys, so the engine mount project turned out to be a little bit more of a pain than I actually have planned for. So what we have actually is the bushing stuck, the actual mount stuck in the middle. I heat it. The base up in the oven. Wife is not here, so I snuck in there, ran it at 425 for about 20 minutes, then grabbed the bushing and put it in the in the in the freezer for a good amount of time. <coughs> Excuse me, to see if it would shrink some. Pulled both of them out, slipped it in, pushed it, and it went out, went in on the bevel side, which is again 
one side has a bevel, the other one is straight cut, or straighter anyways. Went in only about half inch. So at that point I said, okay, I'm stuck in the middle. I can bang it out and start all over. I did that, banged it out, heated it up some more, longer time, squeezed it in, same result. So knowing that now I have a much shorter distance to travel, which is really about four inches of travel. You can see right there, actually more like two inches. I decided to bring it to my vise. I wish I had a bigger vise, I don't. I have a tiny little vise. So what I do is actually, I work it three sides at a time. I go in like this, squeeze a little bit. I move it, squeeze, flip it. Squeeze and so forth. So I'm gonna I put some lines to see if I make progress, to see if I was actually in fact squeezing in or deforming something. And it's actually moving. So again I put a line with a magic marker before under that one and it's gone. So it's under there somewhere. So I put in some WD-40 as I go and uh, I'm gonna keep working it. It takes a little bit of time. But I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get that bushing pressed in there with just a tiny vise. And uh, after I heated this up, again, allow me to travel in a little bit. And how did I bang it out? I used the actual sleeve that I had. The actual sleeve from the old one. I slipped this one in place, tapped it out, worked out great. It was easy to remove. It's hell to put in. So. Again guys, this is how you can press it in your house with very minor machining tooling, small vise, little uh, jigsaw. So I'm gonna actually keep working it until I get it flush. Once I'm flush, I'm done. Just takes time. Check you guys in a bit. So I'm still working on the, on the actual uh, engine mount and uh, the only thing I have to say is that if you have I don't know three hours of your day to waste follow this method because that's all I've done uh, I could have bought the whole part for like 150 bucks but the actual bushing by itself for about 30 bucks but it's getting it's taking me hours uh, to do it so uh, up to you guys if you have the time to spend driving this in and also my vice is kind of giving out on me but still working it almost done I have about half inch to go but it's taking me a damn long time cheap vice and small and actually very very uh, very hard uh, a bushing to, to put in place I'll be back when I'm done so after much much turning of the vice Bending the heck out of it. Actually, uh, finally got. Let me turn this off because I've heard that apparently I may uh, get in trouble. There you go. So, uh, after much coercion, beating on it, turning the lathe, I mean, uh, the vice. And at the end, a little bit of encouragement with a five pound mallet. The engine mount is in. So, much, without much ado, basically, I'm going to hang this up. And if you can see, two of the studs stay in place. Pretty clever, my guess is it looks good from the top. And it's probably hell to do from the bottom. So kudos to the engineers figured out that they didn't really, really, they didn't really have to undo all the bolts. Ah, what am I doing? So uh you know only situations where I could use another hand, but I don't have two. So tie that up couple of more bolts and uh, we're back in business all right guys so after again spending 
quite a bit quite a part of my day going at it uh, the mount is on you can see it it's torqued every bolt is all four of them the little skirts this little moving skirts are on it and uh, it's pretty good Looks centered looks like we're in business so another little project of the Boxster again replacement of the front engine mount as we put things together to get this beast back on the road so starter is is on the front mount is on my next step is to sort through the actual vacuum lines following the diagram that it's on the actual uh, back cover lid so there is a vacuum diagram right there that's what I'm going to use as a pattern to actually be able to figure out where they go and uh, pick up things on the way hopefully I won't find any other problems I thought about doing the Knock uh, uh, sensors. Uh, I'm gonna do the reading about it. How, how often, how common is the problem? If it's a common problem, I may decide to go buy a couple, throw them in. If it isn't something that goes routinely, then I will just let it go. I'm not gonna worry about the Knock sensors, again, it's right there. I don't know if you can see it, but knock sensor is very easy to replace when I am here. So, assuming that, right there it is. So assuming that it's not a big deal, they don't fail often, I'm not going to worry about it. At the same time, I want to start connecting little cables around. So, anyways, another project. Subscribe if you have a boxer front mount, front engine mount, complete. Check with you guys later. Chombo Rico out. Peace.